Hello, I am here for another update. Um, I have not updated since, um, I believe day seven, one week exactly since my surgery. This is day 10 for me. Um, couple of big revelations have been that I was able to go yesterday and get my super pubic catheter out. So um, that was day nine for me. I had it in for nine days. Um, I knew one woman who had had hers out after seven days. And I honestly think I could have had mine out at seven days, but it was a weekend. So I basically had to wait until Monday. Um, they had told me don't expect a week, that it would probably be two weeks. But my urine output from about day six to day seven on was... Um, definitely the 75 or less. In most cases, it was 25 or less. What I mean is what was coming out of the catheter after I had already gone. So um, in some instances, I would go and then nothing would actually come out of the catheter. So I was definitely sure that it was ready to come out. Um, I have to be honest that that last couple days with the super pubic catheter, I was very miserable. I had called the doctor's office on that Friday and I had said like, look, it feels like I have an extremely strong urge to go to the bathroom all the time. I go to the bathroom nearly immediately when I'm done. I feel like my bladder is full again. I need to go. I was getting up seven times, sometimes seven times pretty consistently every night to go to the bathroom, um, making it only max of an hour and a half at night. And during the day, I guess because I wasn't sleeping, it was more like 45 minutes to an hour was as long as I could make it. And then I would go to the bathroom and hardly anything would come out. So... I was convinced that I had a UTI and something was wrong and they kind of just kept telling me they didn't think it was a UTI if I wasn't running a fever and it was probably just the catheter and, um, sorry, that's our doorbell. And that, um, some people are just irritated by that. So I kind of just suffered all weekend and I seriously mean suffered. I was taking, um, a 10 milligram dose of my oxy a couple different times. I tried that. It was not helping with that pain. It was just miserable. It was a burning sensation behind the catheter, definitely just in my bladder, but also like kind of shooting down through the urethra. I was convinced something was wrong, um, but I had no signs of infection. So I guess maybe not. So anyway, Monday rolled around day nine. I went in to get the catheter taken out and then a different nurse explains to me that, oh, the last few days you have the catheter in can be miserable like that because since you don't have um, any residual urine in your bladder, then the catheter is kind of just the balloon inside the catheter is just sitting inside your bladder, basically kind of inflated and rubbing around on things in there. And it's just very uncomfortable, which I wasn't sure why I hadn't been explained to me previously when I had called, but they just basically said that that can be very normal. So don't worry about it. It should stop when they take the catheter out. In fact, they said that they had never had somebody call, you know, two days later after getting the catheter out and still be having that problem. So that was reassuring to hear. Okay, so process of getting the catheter out. They did go ahead and take a urine sample from my tube to ensure there is not a UTI. And I didn't get a call back today. I'm not sure what that means. They told me if it was a no, that I would probably get a call back today. So I'm not sure. Maybe I do have a UTI. I really hope not. I don't feel like dealing with the antibiotic, which then usually causes a yeast infection drama train. So I hope that it's not. But anyway, back to that. Um, so they took a sample from the tube and then they um, cleaned the area and basically kind of said like, relax, take a deep breath. We're going to pull this out. It's not going to be awesome. Um, but I have to say it was uncomfortable for sure. But it was not like, oh my God, unbearable. Not bad, not really bad at all. Um, and it was like immediate relief. I mean, they took that thing out and it was immediately like, oh my gosh, feels so much better. I left there walking out. I literally kept saying like, oh, I feel like a new woman. This is amazing to not have this thing anymore. Um, and then they put just like a little kind of like a gauze bandage over the hole in my skin where the tube was. And they said that the bladder would just close itself up like pretty much immediately. There would be no hole in the bladder. Um, and then I left. I will say last night I got a little sore there, I guess just, you know, from yanking it out. I don't know. So I took a little ibuprofen that helped. I was really looking forward to a full night's sleep of maybe only getting up to go pee once or twice, but still was up a lot last night. 
They told me it could take some time for my bladder to adjust to like sensations and be able to hold the same amount that it used to. So I was still up four or five times last night, which is ugh, just not fun. Obviously, you wake up tired the next day. But I would say during the day, I'm holding it much longer. It feels a lot more normal. Um, I am not sore there today. I was able to take that gauze bandage off and totally expected there to be a hole in my stomach. But like amazingly, the human body just like automatically heals itself because I don't have a hole there. 24 hours later, there is no hole there. The skin has already closed up and it's closed. Um, and I also took the bandages off from the two little incisions that were in my pubic area, I guess from putting in the sling. No scars there, no holes there, nothing. You would never know that I had anything down there. So that's very surprising. So it has been awesome today to not have the catheter. Um, I feel even better now that like the big gauze bandage is off of there. And so like I have no more apparatus <laughs> lingering from this surgery. And my biggest complaint at this point is still, I said this in a video like five, six days ago, I have one spot down there, kind of at like the junction of the bottom of the vagina and the perineum, perineum, where it just feels like it's stitched too tight or it's stitched a wrong angle or wrong direction. Um, but they've told me like it's just a spot where they had to put a lot of reinforcement through stitches. And so it just feels very uncomfortable. That spot feels kind of like raw, irritated, like raw skin. Um, and it's just kind of a constant nagging. I would describe it as just like an irritating burning. And I, I don't know. I had them look yesterday. They said everything looked, it was healing great. There was no inflammation, no redness, no swelling. So everything was great. So I don't know. They did tell me I could put a little of my estrogen cream there um, to promote healing and that it just was a heavily stitched area. It's going to hurt. So last night was my first night using my estrogen cream as well. That was uneventful. No burning, no itching, no irritation. It just was like anything else that you put up there with an applicator. Wear a pad because it's going to come out. But um, apparently that is supposed to help promote healing and moisture and appropriate pH levels and everything down there to promote everything to heal properly. So it's very important. Um, that's, that's really about it. I've been busy working on trying to get the blogs written and get pictures taken of, you know, what I would suggest that you buy and have on hand and all those things. And I'm just still adjusting to life around here as a mom who can't do much. And it's hard on my husband. It's hard on me. I don't like being like a sit and observe mom and I have a four month old baby he's gonna be five months in a few days but like I can't pick him up I can't do a whole lot for him other than hubby bring him to me and I feed him or something but I can't do much um I have a son who's gonna be three years old in a couple days he also doesn't really understand why I can't give him his baths anymore or um anything like that so I'd say now I'm dealing with the logistical and the emotional struggles more than the pain however I will tell you I definitely can tell when I overdo it um, we did go out to dinner for my birthday. If you saw a previous video on day seven, we were going to try to go. It was my birthday. We did go, but it was like two hours and I was ready to be home and be on my couch. Yesterday we went shopping for some plants. We're getting some new landscaping work done. And about halfway through walking around Lowe's, I told my husband, like, I got to go to the truck. <laughs> I need to sit down. So you feel it down there when you've walked around too much. It just feels kind of like pressure heavy. Everything is bottoming out. So I'm still trying not to overdo it, but I know it's going to be hard. I'm just at like week one and a half and I have another technically four and a half weeks of this recovery where I have all these restrictions and it's hard. Um, when you're an active, busy person and you have three kids, it's very hard to tell yourself not to lift, bend, squat, you know, be on your feet for too long, do any exercise, do any walking. I can't even go for like a walk. I'm only allowed to like barely walk maybe halfway around my block and I can't push the stroller while I do it. So it's hard. Um, but I either plan to make a whole video or a whole, um, write a blog about the emotional aspects of this. So sounds like my three-year-old's ready to go to bed. I gotta go. Bye.